Good morning, guys. So welcome back. And before we get started, just wanted to show you uh, the plan until the end of the semester. So there's actually not that many lectures left. Um, actually, we only have, including today, four lectures left um, before the final because instead of like last time uh, um, planning for the presentation to be in the evening, this time I put them just in class. So we will do it next Wednesday and Friday in class. So it's easier, we don't have to like, make time for that. Um, so only four lectures this, three, three, uh, this week, three lectures, and then Monday, then we're done. Okay, and the final is, I think I'm gonna list it wrong, it will be the Wednesday of the final week, okay, and then early morning. And it will be uh, 362 with it. Um, and just again to remind you, the final is the cumulative, okay? Um, and you will be able to put in three sheets of cheat sheet, okay? So um, the only um, additional material compared to the two parts we learned in midterm one and two will be chapter eight and twelve. So that will be what we learned last week and this week, okay? And next Monday, actually, instead of having um, actual lecture, we will again do a review. It just didn't feel like that long ago we did a review session, but then again, on Monday we will have the whole final, uh, final, uh, final exam review. Okay, to wrap up everything we have learned so far. Um, all right, so that's for that. And which team hasn't signed up for the demonstration? Okay, so maybe do it quickly, maybe today, tomorrow, okay? So I'm sorry the TA sent out pretty late, uh, but I think you can assign this week, later this week, to schedule the de demonstration. All right, so that will be um, just a couple of things. And um, the TA is also catching up grading, so I think early next week we'll send out an email saying, so just check out um, Angel, your grades, if you have any questions, let us know. And the final should be relatively easy because I think everyone did really well for midterm one, so when that material comes back, it should be pretty easy to handle. All right, so let's get started with uh, the lecture today. All right, so uh, we will try to finish chapter eight today, which will be um, a bit more um, indexing and we will talk about the cost model, so which is um, comparing different kind of file organization and indexing we have learned so far. Um, and I'll teach you how to um, analyze different kind of cost okay, for uh, doing different operations. And then to finish up that, we will um, discuss about index selection. So based on different kind of queries, on um, what scenario um, in indexing will lead to the best result, the optimal efficiency. This kind of stuff. Um, if we don't finish it, I'll try to finish it early next lecture. And also, I forgot to say, I posted homework six, and it will do next Friday. Normally, I give you like a two week, but this time it's a bit shorter. Um, but it's actually super easy. Okay, so you can go on to check it. It will be related to chapter twelve, but if you have already learned today's stuff, it will be helping a bit. So you can take a look. It's really short. It won't take long. I guess less than an hour. Okay. And also, oh, I keep having lots of announcements popping up. But um, actually, we, we have only done seven quizzes, and initially I planned to do ten. Right? And you know, we only have four lectures left, and one of them is a review session. So maybe what's going to happen is every lecture this week. I don't know. <laughs> um, because I think that you have, uh, because I want to, to have two quizzes drop in the end, so maybe we still try to do it full time, then that'll be more beneficial for everyone. Okay, so remind me before the lectures finishes and we'll do um, quiz eight for today, possibly. Right? Okay, so today we'll start with B plus tree. So if you remember, we were talking about different kinds of indexing before, right? And last time we finished the uh, we finished the discussion on ISAM. Right. ISAM, if you remember. And before ISAM, we were talking about hashing, right? So after hashing, we'll talk about a different kind of tree, tree structure for index. So we say ISAM, one of the drawbacks is that 
uh, whenever, for example, the leave pages are full, but uh, maybe you have a new data record, you know, a new entry you want to add, then you just append what? Overflow pages, right? And if we keep inserting data entries that will keep going to the same spot and we just keep chaining over full pages, then eventually it will lose the point of having this tree structure to help you um, speed up the searching, right? To carrying different kind of uh, data entries. So that's why we said the chaining will be a major drawback for ISA. That's why we talk about uh, B plus tree. And last time I think in the end I caused some confusion, but B plus tree um, essentially is uh, not only we maintain the tree structure from ISAM, but we also have the pointers between them, okay? And besides the pointers between leaves, another thing the plus tree has that ISAM doesn't have is um, when you add something and if the leaf pages get full, sometimes it will lead to the result of restructuring the whole tree, okay? so. Um, we won't get into too much detail for how it actually works. I was going to talk about it, but it would take way too long. But just remember, if you want to keep adding things to the leaf pages, but it's already full, and you still want to maintain the data entry structure, sometimes it's required for you to just restructure the whole tree. So the entries will change as well. But when we learned about ISAM, it's fixed when it's created, right? If you remember. When the um, data entries are created, it just fixed that. So yeah, as I said, I think we won't really spend too much on B plus tree. So this is all you really have to know in terms of, and I'll show you why we have these pointers. And so the, the fact that it's based on ISAM tree, but it has pointers, and also the tree will be restructured if necessary. And so then there's no overflow pages required. Okay. Um, all right, let's see. So here will be an, an example for a B plus tree. Okay, first try to find entry 28. How would you proceed? So we start from the root, right? And we see there's a 17. So what's your first judgment? Mm -hmm. Because 28 is greater than 17, so we should go right, okay? And then you go to 27, and you know 28 is greater than 27, so we go right. And you search here, there's no 28. And it's done. Okay, Similar, uh, similarly, we can do 29, and then also starting from the root, it's greater than 17. Okay, and then when we got here, it's greater than 27, and do the same thing, we found 29. So nothing fancy about here. How about all of um, the entries greater than 15? So again, we can start from based on finding 15, right? And we start from the root. We see 15 is less than 17, so we go here. And we see 15 is greater than 13, so we go here. And when we get here, there's only 14 and 16, right? So we start from the 14, we know 15 is greater than 14, so we keep looking. And here, 16 is greater than 15. Okay, so in this page, we call it this one page, right? In this page, we will only need this 16. This is the only entry in this page that's greater than 15. What next? Now we have this page. That's when the pointer comes in handy, right? We just follow the pointer I said, and then I want all of the data entries in the rest of the pages. Okay, because we know this is structured this way, all of the entries on the right-hand side will just get greater and greater, right? So then we follow the pointers and retrieve all of the rest of the data entries, okay? So you see right here, when we find 15, it's supposedly, if it exists, it supposedly will exist in this page. But this page is not necessarily um, all the entries are required. Okay, we only get the one we want, but for the rest of the pages, we get the, all the entries. How about less than 30? Same thing, right? 
So we start from the root 17 and we find, go right, and we found the 30. And for 30, we know we should, because we want less than, so it's the pointer on the left. And then just all of the pages following the pointer. So that's it. So that's all you need to know um, about B plus tree. Okay? So as, as we said before, B plus tree won't have any overflow pages. And so when you um, insert or delete, sometimes it's necessary that the whole structure will be restructured again. And we call those bubbles up. So maybe something happens down there and you just keep pushing up the changes. Okay? But we won't get into um, too much detail for that because I figure out that's for the grad, grad school material. But we'll just stop it uh, right here. Okay? In terms of B plus tree. So, so far we have learned about hashing, we have learned about ISAM, and we have also learned, learned about B plus tree. Okay, these different um, types of indexing. All right, so that will be all for um, different types of indexing, then we move on to talk about cost, cost model. And if you remember, this Wednesday we have homework five too, and there's a bonus, so you can implement the structure. Okay, to get all right, so let's talk about cost model. So, so far we have talked about different kind of alternatives, and we also talked about um, different kind of indexing. But we haven't, we will talk about, okay, this is fast, this is slow, but we haven't really talked about um, how actually we will estimate the cost, okay? So, um, later uh, here we will talk about how we can actually estimate the cost. So for simplicity, uh, we will ignore the CPU cost, and we will use these three variables. The first is B, which we talk about um, how many number of data pages there are, okay, just like the leaves we see, like the, the notes and leaves. Um, we will also use R, which is the number of records per page, and then D is the average time to read or write this page. So you can think of it as the I/O time. Okay. So. The, uh, the analysis right here, we will think of it as an average case analysis. So everything is very simplified. So when you really maybe try to time it in real life, maybe it won't completely follow the estimation. But roughly you can see the comparison between different kind of indexing and different kind of file organization. Um, all right, so what we will do right here actually is I will do everything on board. And you just fill out the blanks uh, for each slide. So let's skip slide five first, and we will start from slide six. organization and we will have different kinds of operations that we want to look at. So let's see. I'll write down the variables here. D and D is the number of data pages. R is Number of records per page, and D is, let's just think of it as IO. Okay, so we have different kinds of file organization. We have key file, source of file, um, cluster, and then on cluster. Here I'll just draw a blank table, but we won't, we won't really fill in the table, but you get a better feeling of where we're at. And different kinds of operations we want to examine. We have scan and um, equality select.
range select and insertion and deletion. Okay? So we won't really fill out the whole thing that you get a feeling of later on. We basically talk through all the possible combinations. Okay? Let's start from the back. We can take a look at slide page six. So the first operation is scanning. For scanning, there's nothing fancy about it. It's just basically saying we want to scan through all of the data records. Okay? All of the pages, data pages will say. So for a heat file, what do you think will be the cost for scanning? It's also simple just going through all of the data pages. That's it. That's BD. So we have B data pages, and for reading each page, it takes D IO time. So that's all. Okay, super simple. That's for scanning. How about equality select? So on equality select, you see we have two options. We have first is equality selection on key. Okay, it means today we want to just select based on maybe primary key. So you know the result, if based on primary key, the result will only be one. So when you search through things, even though if you have to keep examining one by one by one, when you find one, you're done, right? Because you're based on the primary key. So what do you think the cost will be? So heat file, there's no sorting, no order or anything, right? Everything is just rendered as we discussed before. So when you want to find, um, based on primary key, there's actually no better order. Say, oh, starting from here is better because everything is so random. So you still actually have to pick one by one and check if this is primary key matching, right? So intuitively you think, okay, that means BD. However, as I said before, if you search based on primary key, when you get the result, you're done because you know there will be only one result matching, right? So what do you think will be the cost on average? On average. So on average, it shouldn't be this much. It should be a bit less than this. OK, imagine we have all these files right here. And we just generate so many random results we want to get. And maybe the first time, Starting from here, it has to go this, this far, and then we get the result, okay? And maybe next time, we only have to go this far, and then we get the result. Thinking about all the possibility, the average case is actually half of the time, okay? How about when we want to select based on not the key. When the criteria you search for is not a key, it means even after you got a result, it doesn't mean you, you can stop. Because there might be more matching this criteria. So it'll be the same as scan, you still have to go through all of them. Okay? So if today you are not searching based on a key, the cost is still again Okay, so scanning takes BD, uh, based on a key is half BD, and if it's not based on the key, again it's BD. Alright, so another operation that we want to look at is range select. So range select, you can think of it in SQL, maybe we want to find employee salary between 3,000 and 5,000, so that's a range. Right? So in key file, do you think the way uh, the entries are being ordered will help the range select? Not at all, because things are not in order. So in order to do range select, do you still have to go through every single? Yeah, you still have to. So that would be equal to the cost for scanning. Okay, so that's for range select. Right. 
So then, next one, for insertion, for heat file. A core idea for heat file is everything that's going to be randomly. So when you want to insert, you actually don't have to worry about where you want to insert the data at all, right? So you just directly insert it at the end of the whole file, where all the, um, all the data are stored, and then you put it at the end, then you're okay, okay? So the cost of it, um, actually a bit more than D, okay? So D is definitely necessary. <coughs> Why is that? Where does this D come from? Okay, yeah, to write the record in. So, actually there are more than just one D, so there are two. Why do we have two? So, it's really subtle though, because, you know, it's not so different, but because um, the whole bottleneck will be IO time, uh, IO time, so we kind of care about what's the multiple in front of it. So the reason we have two D is because step one, you want to get to um, that page first. So retrieving the page itself, <coughs> one D, okay? Writing it, second D. Okay, that's it. But, uh, but do we not have to think the recording picture has the primary key which is only there and then so we still have to go to the new PC if the primary key is only there? Oh, yeah, that would be, yeah, here it ignores it, but if you want to check whether it's against the primary key, then you plus the search. Yeah, but if we don't care about that, we just append it, you know. Yeah, that's great. Okay. How about deletion? So here I said write the page back. It's not a deletion itself, right? but if you look at just write the page back itself, takes cost of D, right? So that blank will be a D. So that's write the page back. So okay, here we say, um, yeah, when we do insertion, we then think about whether um, the primary key will be conflict. But let's look at delete. So when you delete, you will want to delete based on some criteria. You might want to search for something first. So today, say if the search is based on a given ID, an R, um, like a record ID. So here, um, the RID is different from the primary key because if you can remember, RID is the one for the record. It's up data records and stuff, right? So do you think searching it will take as long as searching for other keys, other other attributes? So here, uh, for if the search is based on a given RID, we have the cost of searching the RID first, and then you take and uh, you delete the record. Okay. For the searching, keep in mind it's a bit smaller, but if you want to based on different kinds of values other than RID, you also have a search, but that's a more costly. Right, because it's not based simply based on R. So this search you can think of it as still having to go through, like scanning them, all of them, and then find the correct one you want to delete. But well, for this search, if it's only based on RID, it should be faster. Okay. But overall, we don't really care about the difference because you still have to do this. Okay, and bottleneck will be here anyway. Okay, so just remember for delete, the major bottleneck is just eventually um, deleting and plus different kind of search. Okay, so that's for heat file. So when you go back to, if you want to review it, reading the textbook, it will actually have a huge table just like that, listing different kinds of costs. And 
Um, I would say don't really get confused by the answer provided to because I found um, within the table, within the textbook itself, the table actually has um, a difference in terms of how they discuss it in the text. Okay, so th just don't think, mm, why you say it here and then the other way around in the table. Okay, let's take a look at sortify. What do you think of the scanning in sortify? If we review again, the tax for scanning is just go through all of the pages. Yeah, what do you think of the cost for sorting? How about equality search? What do you think? So here we make an assumption. I didn't write it down, but assume search using binary search. You guys know binary search? Okay. So the reason we can use binary search because it's sort of yeah, because it's sort of here and it's not in e file. Okay? The binary search is just like what we did on the e Okay. So something here, we are using binary search. So let's take a look at the first one for equality select. If we only match one record, what do you think will be? So, if, mm -hmm, yeah. so if we think of this to be all of the pages, let's just think of it in imaginary, arbitrary way. We have these many pages, right? And just say we have these pages, all right? And on average, how many steps will it take for us to get to a certain page that we want? Not right? Because every time it in half, cut in half, cut in half. So that would be log B, and the base will be, right? Because that's where we have the half, 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 half. Okay? So on average, it takes log basically to B steps for us to get to K2. Okay? And whenever we get to a certain page, we still have to know, let's say, the data entry inside there, so we know. We go left or go right, right? So every time doing that, it actually takes an IO as well. So all these steps, each of them takes an IO to D log. Okay, so that's for uh, when we only match one record. So think of it as you already know, your, the answer will be just one record. But if today, like we did earlier, if you know, um, maybe um, constitutively, other records will also fit this criteria. Here we won't get into too much of how the cost is actually be, but all the, um, on top of this, this cost, you just want to plus reading all the rest of the records. Like a small cost, but if the end result is more than just one, okay, then you plug the over it. Or maybe. How about range select?
what do you think? So range select, you just, for example, you want to find within, or salary within 3,000 and 5,000. Then first you start by just determining where the 3,000 is. You keep going, the rest of the rest, until it stops, until it doesn't fit anymore. So actually, for the range search, the cost is again, find, say the base first, the, plus, the part you want, and then you just read all the rest. Okay. <coughs> so it's the same. Okay, let's think about insertion. What do you think of insert? This time, can it be as simple as heap file? Like we just append it at the end, or we cannot do that anymore. So because um, this time we are in sorted files, so when you want to insert where it is being inserted, is actually important, right? So you want to start out by searching the spot that you can insert, right? So what will that be? You will find the place you can insert first. And then, after you write it in, okay, say you write with the D, because uh, that's an IO cost. You write it, you have, say we have this, and you say we find, 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 and find this is the spot that we can write the data. Okay? So not only do we write it in, but you also have to move everything maybe one spot to the right or you know, one spot forward, okay? So what would the cost be for writing that, writing the rest? So it depends on how many data pages we have, right? So for simplicity, let's just say, okay, for B, F, B, for simplicity. Or you can, if you want to do average case, you can do um, half B. Okay, for B. And because every time for writing again, it takes an IO, So then we times the D, right? Because for the rest of the pages, every time you write it back, that, that's an IO cost, correct? So that's it. Okay, so here you can simplify just saying, okay, we want to search it first, and then for the rest, take care of it. If you want to make it more accurate like we did before, for average case, you can put half. How about deletion? <coughs> so deletion is actually really similar to how we discussed for heap files. So here I say read and rewrite all subsequent pages like we did there. Right? Write like D or half D. Right? The delete. So if the search is based on a given RID, like we discussed earlier, it's a smaller search cost plus D. I think I'll write them all down. Okay. Write back all of the rest of the page, that's a BD. Okay, if it's based on RID, you have to search it first, and then, so you plus the BD. And then 
If it's not based on RID, you still search it, potentially with a higher search cost, and then post it. one, we want to talk about the cluster, cluster index file. Okay, so for the cluster index file, you'll see some really weird assumptions going on here. So here I say empirical study shows that the pages usually have 67% occupancy. Okay, so that's just um, the experiment. The results of the experiment. Okay, uh, usually they only take up uh, sixty-seven percent. So where does this sixty-seven come from? Sixty-seven looks like one hundred minus thirty-three. So then thirty-three, you think of one third. So actually, uh, seventy uh, sixty-seven percent comes from two third. Okay. So two third is equal to one over one point five, right? So, if today we say um, usually the pages have just 67% of occupancy, and if the number of data pages we have are B pages, then how many actual physical pages do you think we have? That's it, right? So then, here, if we say the number of physical pages is, then you should write 1.5. Okay? You guys get why? Not really? Okay. Okay, so. Um, that's how it works. So, first we started out saying empirically, the occupancy is only 67%. Okay? 67%, it actually comes from two thirds. Okay, so the two-third we can convert it into 1 over 1.5, right? So if today we say in total we have B pages that have data in there, okay, then that means physically we actually have 1.5 B pages. But um, 0.5 B of them are not used. So what do you think about the scanning? This time, what's the cost for scanning? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 1.5 BD. So instead of just being BD, you actually will visit a bit more than that. Because before you visit a page, you don't know whether it's occupied or not. So you still have to visit it. Right? So the scanning will be 1.5 BD. How about? Equality select. So this time it's cluster. So you might want to think back to the trees we learned last time. This is a cluster in the file. So when we talk about cluster on cluster, that's when we talk about the tree structure. You remember we have to simply draw a like triangle here, and then we have leaf pages down there, right? So, um, how do we estimate the search cost when we have a tree structure? <coughs> we say it's based on tree form. Height. It's based on the height of it. Okay? So, if today we say, Inside here, we have 1.5 B pages in the tree. And if our structure for every node, it has F children. If you recall last time, right? we used the notation F. Then what would be the height for the tree? Review quickly. Start from starting from the most 
simple one, simplest example. If today we have a tree that's like this, okay, and we know it only has two children. So for the first level, we can say it has it has one level. Second level, two you knows. Third level, four knows. Where does this come from? It comes from one equals to two to zero, two equals to two to one, four equals to two to two. So what's the height? Height is two levels. And how do we get the two? So what do you think the cost for matching only one record in equality search will be? If today the height is like that. So it kind of means we have these many steps to go through before we reach the part we want to search for. And as we said before, every time you go to, go to one page, to determine what, where to go for the next step, you have to read the page. And reading the page takes an IO cost, so you times the D. Okay? Okay, I'll just talk about the next one and we can think about what to do for the quiz. way less than I would like to, but we only have five minutes left. So I'll continue next time um, for the rest of the cost. And now Kate Carroll, piece of paper. file. Okay? We can do equality. 
equality search, right? And when we talk about equality search, um, we talk about if we search based on the primary key, then there will be an average case of the cost. What's the cost of it? Okay, using these. What's the average case of it? Just where exactly where we finished. If today the index or order in a tree, and um, let me think. Okay, I'll do the exact same. In the tree, inside the tree, we have number of pages as 1.5 p. Okay. And each node has f children, then what's the height of the tree? I'm asking this part. That's a question mark. Okay, again. Inside this tree, this is a tree structure, okay, starting from a root, we have 1.5p number of pages, okay, and each node has f children nodes, then what's the height of the tree? That's it, if you're done, send it to me, and I'll see you on Wednesday, don't forget homework class. Yeah, it's quiz 8.